blow up on the mic, watch how I serve him, serve him, serve him Hot the civic, do the dash, look how I'm swerving, swerving, swerving This island up on my body, might just curve her, curve her, curve her. She see the drip, she see the chain, so now she yearning, yearning, yearning And if she bad Rihanna tight, then I'm a worker, worker, worker Hi guys, welcome back to Life of Dash or if you're new here, hi, my name is Dorothy. And I'm Ashley. And today we're filming a very special video. We're filming our HBCU experience. You know, we went to Morgan, hey. so gotta share our experience. But before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us on all our socials. They're always linked down below. But with that being said, let's just get started with the video. As I said before, we're sharing our college experiences. So it'll be really interesting because we both get to share what we went yeah. through while we were in college. I came in as a freshman, she came in as a transfer, so it's gonna be really interesting to see how we both went through our experience. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. I transferred in from Drexel University. For those who don't know, mm -hmm. Drexel is a PWI in Philadelphia, PA. Um, I literally just left that school simply because I couldn't afford it. It's really expensive. <laughs> yeah, really uh, and then I transferred to Morgan because I just wanted cheaper tuition, honestly. I It wasn't even like a PWI versus HBCU thing. I mostly did it because of money. And for those who don't know, Morgan State isn't a part of the University of Maryland system. It's not a part of the public school system in Maryland. So the tuition is slightly lower compared to UMD. So I went to Morgan for cheaper tuition. Yep. And I went to Morgan solely off of, I wanted to join the cheer team because I the best, um, HBCU cheer team. Um, <laughs> also, all throughout my life, I went to predominantly white schools. So I wanted to get the experience. I wanted to understand my culture just a little bit. Well, I already understood my culture, but you know it's different when you go to HBCU. Exactly. You know, everyone looks like you. It just feels good. Like it's a whole different type of experience. Like so, that's one mm -hmm. of the reasons why I wanted to go to HBCU. Also, my yeah. mother also went to VSU. And she cheered with Lou and everything. So I was like, okay, like I want that experience that my mom tells me about. So that really played a factor in which school yeah. I chose for college. Yeah. She wanted the whole HBCU yeah, I experience. The entire experience. So. so my major, I was a biology major, biology pre-med. No, my parents did not force me to go the uh the medical route. Yeah. I am Nigerian <laughs> and I know Nigerian parents. African parents are notorious for forcing their children into the medical route. That was not the case. My father is actually a lawyer and he actually wanted all of us to go the lawyer route and go his route. Um, but I decided to go the medical route because I don't know, I've always been interested in science and just been interested in medicine. I probably got it from my mom because she is a nurse. So I decided to go the medical route when I transferred to Morgan because uh, at Drexel, I was a political science major, but I switched to biology pre-med when I came to Morgan and I haven't regretted it since then. I love it. I majored in physical education with a concentration in physical therapy. Um, around my junior year of high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to major in, but I ended up coming across the movie Just Right. I don't know if you've seen it with Queen Latifah <laughs> in common. And I was just like, oh, like that looks dope. Like I wanna I wanna do that. So I majored in that, but however, I've taken a different like path. I am in school right now for public health. So um, just working different jobs, I realized like physical therapy wasn't really for me. Like that's not something I wanted to do throughout my life. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, and it's okay to figure out that later mm -hmm. in life. I mean, that's what going through experiences and having internships are supposed to be. Yeah. So like, how much did we study as the type of majors that we're in? So as a biology major, honestly, like I did my calculation, like before the video, I studied somewhere in between 35 and 40 hours a week. So basically we had cheerleading practice every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. So it was from- we used to, I think freshman year, they required everyone to go to study hall. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was probably, I don't that, remember how often that was, but. Yeah, I don't remember. Either, oh my God, that was so long there. ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're so That's old. We freshman year, yeah. Um, freshman year, I didn't have any study tactics. I didn't study at all. Um, <laughs> so if you guys, if, if you guys did not see our story time vid, like, yo, 
Ashley was the life yeah. of the party the freshman the year. Party. Like I was, I was, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to roll with the cool kids. <laughs> yeah, I didn't study at all freshman year, but sophomore year, like and throughout, I kind of tackled down, increased my study habits. Um, I wouldn't say I studied as much as Dorothy did. Um, I did too much. I did. Like, I did enough. I did yeah. enough to like be okay. I did. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't even know how often I used to study. I would study like I was the type of pe person to study like two days before the exam or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't really. Mm -mm. I wasn't a big studier, but yeah. yeah, I I used to ace my exams and stuff though. But. Yeah. She was good. Yeah. She was good. She, but she also like had that party lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is fine. You're like, live your life, girl, because we both graduated. We both did very we both well. Did, so. Yeah, so. Um, basically, like, moving on to, like, class size and tutoring, I felt like the class size was pretty average. Pretty average I never really had, like, unless you're, like, you're, like, in a huge lecture hall. Like, I know, like, my chemistry class was, like, in a huge lecture hall, which I think it was only no more than 40 students. So, it's really not yeah, that like bad. Yeah, like, 30 to 40 students yeah. in every class. It wasn't bad. Yeah. There are tutoring available. You better go to the communications mm -hmm. building. They have tutoring. They also have the writing center. I used to use that a lot. Exactly. That's, I think that's all in the communications mm -hmm. building. That's yeah. all in the communications building. And mentors, yes, there are mentors available, but you have to to look for you them. You have to look for them. You yeah. have to look for them. Like I, for me, my mentor, I actually joined a research program at my school. So I was able to basically have a mentor kind of give it to me. Um, but if you don't go that route, you have really, you really do have to look for your own mentor. You can start by your advisor. Mm -hmm. You know what that advisor, advisor. is that Morgan? My well. advisor was actually, <laughs> but you have to be on her. Like I was like, you're gonna know my name. I'm at your door and we need to meet. I'm graduating on time. Yeah. Okay, so, but also they have um, access orientation too. And they have a like, so they have a podium of students who are currently enrolled in Morgan and have been there for a while so they know and they can give you some insight and knowledge on how you can be successful throughout your time being there. So that was access orientation. Mm -hmm. And then moving on, we're gonna talk about campus specs, about what we thought about Morgan's campus. Me personally, I love Morgan's campus. Yeah. I thought it was designed very well. And during our tenure there, we actually had a few new buildings that were mm -hmm. built. Business that building in the Jenkins spectacular. Building. They just built a new Montebello as well. Beautiful. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking, I don't know who designs for Morgan, but they're doing a great job. Like, and by the way, Montebello is basically the financial aid, admissions office, mm -hmm. you know, those type of things. New building, brand new. We haven't even seen it. I haven't even seen it. But, but I know it's like they're lucky because we used to have to take a hike a just hike. to get to Montebello. Like, like you, ooh, you, you would have to take your lunch box. box. You have to go, to make, to make sure you have everything. So you don't know how long you're going to be exactly. there. And you got to make that walk all, all the way, way back. back so. All the way back. Like the quad and Montebello used to be in extreme opposite yeah. ends. New generation Morgan, you guys have a good. You guys are privileged okay yes because we yes. didn't have that we definitely did not have that mm -mm. but overall the campus is really pretty we loved it they had a football stadium on campus and just i think the only thing that was missing is that they didn't have like the big mansion houses for fraternities yeah and i'm just saying like that because i went to drexel and we had that but other than that it was lovely beautiful Definitely but I think it's one of the best HBCUs. I, I 100% agree. As far as its design. Exactly. And all that. Exactly. So, so now we're going to talk about housing. Ashley will go first because she came in as a freshman. Yes. So freshman year, I stayed at Harper Tubman. It's an honors dorm. Um, right now it's co-ed, but when I stayed, it was just all females. Uh, we had a handicap room, so it was huge. We yeah. had our own bathroom because usually you have to share your bathroom with your other suite mm, mate or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And then sophomore, junior, and senior year, I stayed at Morgan View, which is an off-campus apartment, but it's still through Morgan State. Yeah. Well, I lived on Thurgood Marshall Apartments. <laughs> and for those who don't know, the Dirty 30. Dirty 30. <laughs> like, it was just... I feel like it's illegal to put eight people in an apartment together. Yeah. It got a, It got hectic. And no matter how much you cleaned it, I just felt like it was always dirty. But we did have a kitchen and a living room and we didn't have visitation. No visitation. So was it was it was okay, but then 
eventually just like ashley i eventually had to transfer to morgan view because i could not do third good for morgan another view is like year. moving on up like, yeah like it's, like, like it's like it's an upgrade yeah. it's not that big of an upgrade but it's like an upgrade it's from, from third good thing. exactly yeah. so it i mean like third good got the job done but like morgan view was was just a little bit better plus you get your you own more freedom a little bit well i'm all you a little bit, <laughs> a little a bit. Little bit of but you get your own room at Morgan View. Yeah. You're still you're still sleeping on twin beds, but mm -hmm. you do get your own room. And all that money to sleep on twin beds. Too. Exactly, exactly. And Morgan is so very expensive. Yeah. So moving on, we're gonna talk about the food. Food. So. I would recommend the canteen if you're coming in as a freshman. I would recommend, well, I don't know how it is now, but when I was there, they had the salad and I would get the grilled chicken and they had this Jamaican the man used to, to make bomb pizzas. Dorothy has a different don't, opinion, don't, but don't. I thought they were amazing. Try to stay clear of the refact if you can. Well, yeah, actually, really actually loved the pizzas in the canteen. <laughs> I personally thought the canteen pizza was kind of trash, honestly. I like I always felt that they were undercooked. And mm -hmm. I always had to go back to third good and pizzazz my pizzas a little Not bit because no, it is. He knew what he but was I doing with them. I rather eat the I rather eat the pizza from the canteen than the pizza from the refac. Mm -hmm. Which like in Morgan we call the dining hall the refac. The yeah the dining hall from the refac was the refac eh. is just ghetto. It's like, they had eh. ex felons cooking your food. I no, feel like, like I don't even know, <laughs> but it was just. Not I feel, good. I feel like the only thing I could give the refac for is for breakfast. I mean, that omelet station was A1. <laughs> oh, not A1. It, it was just doable. <laughs> I was, <laughs> let me not hype it up too much. Don't hype it, right? I don't want to be like, oh, Dorothy from that YouTube. Is, like, yes, yeah. okay, no. no, it was just doable. But doable. like, overall, we prefer the canteen mm -hmm. over the refat. Your freshmen definitely get a meal plan because yeah. you are going to use it. To You're going to use it to the max. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much all you're gonna be eating, eating from. <laughs> like, there's really no grocery stores around. Um, I mean, New Generation Morgan. If you have a car, I mean, obviously you can make it to the grocery store. Oh yeah, stuff, cause but... I, that's another thing. Freshmen can, can have cars on campus, but my license struggle, y'all know. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I do not have a car freshman year. Yeah, yeah so. but if you do, then I guess you're okay. But if you're like us and don't have a car, then yeah, that meal plan is gonna come in mm -hmm. handy. For sure. For sure. Moving on to the parties. Party, okay. <laughs> Freshman year. For me, I know I did most of the like flyer parties, the house parties. She was a party girl. Bags, the day parties. She day did parties all. are lit. If, you, if they're still having them, make sure you go to smooth day parties because that will be the time of your life. Yeah, I, day parties. I got hip to smooth Woo! day party my senior year. I'm talking about two weeks out from graduation. I'm talking and I'm packed like, with people. Like, Where have I been? <laughs> it was so fun. Oh my gosh. And then yeah. later down the line, it was more so we would go to like bars. Bars, clubs, go out to stuff, DC. Go to DC, stuff like that. Yeah, so, and thanks, and since we're talking about parties, like just to, for things to do around Baltimore, Mm -hmm. Like we said, like there's not much to do around Baltimore. Yeah. I mean, there is. There is, but it's like we didn't want, to, like, as you know, Baltimore is pretty violent. So it's like if we could stay clear of going. Yeah. In areas yeah. around Baltimore, we kind of did, unless it was like, oh, we're having a party in this area, like a so flyer, we'll like here. a flyer party. Yeah, yeah, but other than that, it was like we're not hanging out in Baltimore. Baltimore. Like we will go up like Fed Hill and like Fells Point, Point, but mm -hmm. if it wasn't those areas and we just really have yeah, oh and Towson yeah if it wasn't those areas it's like we have no reason to be to in Baltimore be hanging we, out we'd it. rather just go to DC yeah next topic is student athletes so we were both student athletes we were a part of the Morgan State cheerleading team and honestly being a student athlete was time consuming and hard um, considering that we were both like science majors, yeah. it cheerleading did take a good chunk of our time. And I used to study like 30 to 40 hours a week, some, somewhere in between that bracket. So between studying and then also incorporating cheerleading every day, it was a lot. It was very hard. Mm -hmm. like, 
not hard, but it was a little bit challenging. It was time. Yeah, it was challenging. And because of like cheerleading, we just weren't really able to join as much organizations we would we would have wanted to, but Overall, it was a good experience. Yeah. We wouldn't trade it for the world. Definitely, also you had to like balance balance it all. Your time, mm -hmm. and like you, you meet you meet friends and teammates who are gonna be like lifelong people in your life. Mm -hmm. So we enjoyed it, and I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. No sir. Mm -hmm. And like just bouncing off of that, like clubs, other clubs and organizations. There's tons. Of clubs That's that you good. guys can join. And easy to like, you can easily find them. Mm -hmm. um, they usually have like signs all over the student center or even just yeah. talking to people. Like talking. you'll figure out about the organizations and all that. Super easy to join. Super easy to join. Um, we just didn't really, I mean, I know you attempted to, but. Yeah, I, I joined NCNW. I did get inducted and I was involved for just a little part of it, but Cheerleading, of course, took up a big chunk of my time, and I did join um, Ascend, Ascend program, which is a biomedical program at Morgan. And once I joined Ascend, that took up all, all my time because yeah. I was doing cancer research. But there is opportunities, so many opportunities to join organizations on campus. I'm Nigerian and I joined like the African Student Organization. There's even an organization for natural hair. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's just there's just so many. You can if join. you feel like there's a place for you in an org, I would definitely say join. At the time, I really just didn't feel like I needed to be in an organization. I didn't really have trouble socializing or anything like that. So yeah. if you have trouble socializing or finding friends, I definitely recommend joining an organization. Exactly, exactly. Next topic is the student body. Yes, student body. So we have different experiences, yeah. I guess. Well, I, from my experience, I felt very welcome. Everyone seemed extremely friendly. Yeah. Um, when I first came, I thought that I would, you know, kind of not really fit in that well, just because of how proper I am and, you know, being from predominantly white schools and everything. I thought that it would be harder for me to fit in, but mm -hmm. I didn't see that at all. Um, I think a lot of that stems from my childhood and like just, having a lot of cousins and stuff from like the inner city and all over. So I got a lot of experience in different areas. So I was yeah. pretty well-rounded in that area. Yeah. I personally thought that the Morgan student body was cliquish. Mm -hmm. Personally, because I came in as a transfer and but when you come in as a transfer, especially during like your sophomore year, People already have their cliques from freshman year. They already have their groups. And a lot of people are like, no new friends, no new friends. <laughs> and that was definitely me. Like, I don't, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but like I got kicked out of Morgan and my freshman year or my first year at Morgan. So by the time I came back and like, you know, got back into cheerleading, I felt like even them, like they even had like their own cliques and everything. So as a transfer for me, I just felt it was kind of hard to like make friends because everyone had their friend their friend groups already, already had their friend groups established. And I just felt like they just weren't as welcoming. Mm -hmm. But that could also be like a me problem because I'm also very shy and very standoffish. And I felt like pretty much everyone except for like Ashley and like the select few really, really only know who I really am because I'm always just so shy and just standoffish. But I don't know. It can go, the Morgan, the student body can go either way. I either felt like way. they were cliquish, but I came as a fresh, as a, a transfer. I, I agree that it was cliquish. I agree that yeah. I was, am still cliquish a little mm. bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And overall experiences at Morgan. Overall How would you rate it? it? I would rate my experience at eight. I found some lifelong friends that are gonna be, you know, the godparents of my kids one day, be at my wedding, my bridesmaids, all that. So yeah, I had a great experience at Morgan, learned a lot and grew a lot, definitely. So yeah. I give it an eight. I definitely see the groove because mm -hmm. she was party, 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 let's all get wasted. Mm -hmm. And now look at her now. Yeah, I had a completely different <laughs> mindset coming in yeah. when I came out. So um for me, I would rate my Morgan experience as a five. I didn't like it, but I definitely didn't hate it. I just, maybe if I would've came in as a freshman, I would've had a different outlook on it, but I just felt I was just there to do what I had to do and to get my degree and get out. 
So I, I was able to do cheerleading. I joined organizations. I did research. I shadowed doctors. I did everything that I wanted to do in college at Morgan. Uh, but just because my experience isn't like a perfect 10 or even like an eight like Ashley, that, that, that doesn't mean I didn't have a good time. I really did enjoy my time. But I definitely could have had maybe like a better time at a, maybe a different different HBCU. I did apply to Howard and FAMU and UMES. Um, and FAMU was actually my first choice. So I don't know. Maybe I would have went there. I would have had like a better experience. But either way, I liked Morgan. What I got do you the think job done. affected your experience like at Morgan? Or what, why couldn't you get the full experience? I honestly think it goes back to being a transfer and people having their click. Also, like, because that, that's just one. Like, people, honestly, in my opinion, they're just not not as welcoming because you already have your groups from freshman year. Like, why, why let anyone else in? Two, two, I came in as a 21-year-old freshman sophomore, and I was older than the rest of the people in my year so i was 21 by the time i came back from the y'all i got kicked out of school but when i got kicked out of school so and other people were like 18 17 18 so there was also that big disconnect because i'm like oh i want to go to the bars and i want to do this then a third and they're like oh we're youngins like we can't do anything and it was also just that like that eight the age gap was kind of like doing it for me so I think that's what would have just kind of like made my Morgan experience just a little bit you know eh. so but I but don't get me wrong I really really like Morgan but yeah <laughs> okay yeah but guys, this was pretty much it, our HBCU experience. experience. I hope it helped you. I hope you helped you decide which school you want to pick or if you want to go to HBCU or PWI. Yeah. Just know I, the HBCUs are super lit. Yeah. And we know like, you know, the high school seniors, they already picked their school. So shout out to Morgan State, class of 2024. Yeah. Um, we hope that this video helped you guys out and we hope you guys enjoy Morgan in the fall and enjoy your Morgan experience. Mm -hmm. Just because Ashley had one experience and I had another experience, that shouldn't Don't define let, yeah. your experience yeah, you have because your experience is what you made it. Like what I did was how I made my Morgan experience and what she made her Morgan experience. Yeah, so we just hope that we can give you a little bit of insight. And if you have any more questions, be free to type it in the comments we'll answer them we're really good at that um yeah so yeah like comment and subscribe follow us on all our socials and go Stay bears tuned. thanks for watching bye